Okay, so uh, a couple of quick jobs today on a T4 van. I've got uh, a horn to fix, not working, some bulbs to change, um, a few other little bits and pieces I'll try and get through. I've got a bit of a list. Uh, this is a van I've done quite a lot of work on over the years. It belongs to a good friend of mine, and uh, we're just going to carry on slowly making it better bit by bit. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the horn. Not working currently. I've got a feeling it's probably gonna be the fuse. So fuse box on this is behind here. Undo the screw, there it comes. Might be tricky to do, one hand, but we'll try. Okay, so fuse box is there. Uh, what number is the horn? Let's have a look. Just throwing loads of stuff on the floor, I regret that. Horn number 13. 13, that's this one. Pull that out, have a look. She's gone. That is a 20 amp fuse. I don't really want to put anything bigger in. So, another 20 amp fuse. Do I want to go bigger? Not really. Twenty is enough. Yep, no signs of overheating on that. So, quick fuse change. Job done. These headlights are obviously aftermarket. Um, and they're also a pain to get to. So, I've got to a couple of bulbs. Probably leave the camera over here somewhere. And. Uh, just work away. Okay, what I've got to do here, the easiest way to get to the back of this light is to take the air filter out. Push that down. Pull that clip. This is so awkward to get out. There's not a lot of room in this for quite an old van. It's still pretty tight. That's the air filter out. So air filter's out and down here. No, that's the clip that holds the air filter on the lights here. Oh, I hit the bulb too often. Bulb off. That's the new bulb going on. New bulb. Let the cable go. There he is. Come on there. Try not to touch the bulb because the grease on your fingers can make the bulb go funny. That doesn't want to stay on there very easily, which is just the worst right now. Put the bulb down there and let's hope we don't lose it. What I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see, probably not. I'm just going to feed the connector back through the rubber. The rubber's kind of stopping it getting on the bulb. The connector may also need a tweak because it felt quite loose on the on the bulb. Nothing a pair of pliers can sort. Yeah, that's pretty loose, isn't it? So, if I was to leave that like that, you'd either blow a fuse or lose connection at some point. So, we will return with a pair of pliers. Okay, so I'm back. Pair of pliers. I'm just gonna. I'm get on these, you can see they've bowed outwards slightly. A little pinch, not too much. Let's see if that goes on any better. Steady bulb, steady. Try not to touch the bulb, I just did that I think though. Okay, and then I've got to feed it back in here. I'm sorry, my head may get in the way. I can't see a lot. I think that's quite the right rotation, so we'll fiddle them out. 
really hard to see here, to be perfectly honest. I wish I'd paid more attention when I took the other one out. Okay, I might actually Let's have a look. So, what I'm struggling with is I can't see, and you're now going to see it. Let's try and keep the right way up. Okay, so, looking in there, that bulb only goes in one way. So what we need to do is figure out how this goes in it. So what we're trying to do is just put it in there. And I think it is flat side there. Okay, I had to do that bit off camera. But that's the bulb now hooked in. And you can see I've got the clip here hooked in as well. That just hooks in under there. So that's that bulb done. I'll put the cover back on and we'll move to the next one. Okay, so this side is going to be much more difficult. We've got a leisure battery in the way, and the back of the bowl was kind of down in there. Every time I've done it previously, I've had to take the headlight out. And I know I'm going to have to do it again, but I really don't want to. There's a couple of reasons why. First of all, you have to pull this panel off to get the headlight out, because there's a, a screw in here. And last time we had this off, I scratched a bumper and ended up having to respray it for him. So I would strongly prefer not have to do that again because that was a bit of a nightmare although I'm not a painter I'm quite happy with my painting skills on that one um, speaking of painting at some point I'm gonna have to do this lower sill here and the instep here it's gonna go the same color as the rest of the van so we have to repair it at some point and paint it black but it is cold and as you can probably hear, quite windy. It's not a day for painting. I don't have a workshop I can paint in, so I have to do it outside. I only do little bits for that reason. Um, plus, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get back to the bulb. Okay, I've had a bit of a poke about. What I'm thinking is if I take this unit here off, I might be able to then get to the back of the bulb, which is kind of down in there. I'll give you some idea where we are with these two here. Back of the bulb's gonna be about there. So I think, cut the 10 mils on that, whip it off and see what we've got. Okay, apologies, you're probably getting a lot of wind noise. I can hear it, so the microphone will undoubtedly pick it up. And what I've done straight away is drop the socket. Typical, luckily it's landed somewhere I can get it. Moment, Colin. I'm just going to go find my socket. Okay, so table socket. Hoping this will just undo. I don't think I've taken this off before. If I'm honest, I'm not really sure what it is. I know that's the main fuse there. Some of the main fuses. So if I had to, I could figure out what, what this is I'm taking off, but at the moment, it's just something that's in my way. So, let's just see what movement we can get with that. And the leisure battery, the negative anyway. Stay over there for me. Oh my god, I don't want you to touch that there. Stay over there for me. Yeah, okay, that might be enough. Might not be, because the battery is right there. Yeah, I reckon I could... What I'll do now is I'll just take the top screws out of the... Out of the light. Now, this has been bodged a few times, unfortunately, before we got here, so the screws aren't brilliant. I've not found a way to make it any better yet. Well, I really should at some point.
So the idea behind this basically is just to give myself yeah, enough wiggle room so I can get the back of that off the bowl. How much of this you guys can see. I might get a closer look at the stick. Okay, not the best angle, my hand's going to get in the way a lot, but you get the idea. So again, unhook the wire, out comes the bulb, and then we get a bit of wiggle room, to be honest. You see everything there looks good, okay. Bulb has seen better days. This one feels a bit tighter in here, that's good. That's the old bulb, comes the new one. Uh, where's my cable on? There he is up there. Okay, we see next to all them still live fuses. That one was much tighter than the other one, so that was nice. Once again, a bit of filling to get it in. Let's see what I haven't done as well. Cover that over. Don't really want that going anywhere we don't want it. I don't know if falling in in the right place straight away. Just have to hook that under there. Cable out the way. Just that. Like that. Okay, before I reassemble that, now in there you still can't really see, but it's just quick bulb fault. Before I reassemble everything, I will just start the van up and check the lights are working. There we go, lights on. That one's good. Good, nice bright lights. Check the full beam while we're in here, which I think is. So, it's a flash. Getting this on now. Full beam, full beam, okay that's all good, so I can... Okay, it's the van done, so I can turn that off and put it back together. That was definitely easier than pulling the light out completely, I think, so... What I'll do is I'll stick you back up here. You can kind of see where I am, pretty much. Yep, good. So, back cover needs to go back on. I'll probably use my head's probably in the way, but I don't feel I can do. This looks like a relay for something. Fans, maybe. Could be for the fans. Not 100% sure. I'm sure, plenty of you know exactly what it's for. But until I need to know, I don't know. Different way. It doesn't feel quite right. It's probably 
you a lot. Hello, right? Yeah, Well, that was my neighbour, just popped up for a little quick hand or something. There we go, that one's in. Well, that's good, that is. Job done, let's get the negative cable back on. I've got too many tools in my hands. Let's put this back on there. Gotta be a little bit careful where this one faces. Okay, there we go. Job done, lights working. Okay, next thing on the list is a knock on the passenger side. I'm gonna do first of all a little look. See if see anything obvious. Oh, the shop looks pretty rusty, it's not a long way from them. It's E. Obviously they've had wishbones being done recently, or not new wishbone, but wishbone bushes has been done. I had to get some help on that one, I couldn't get it apart. Ball joint looks okay. Kind of looks okay under here. So what we'll do, we'll take it for a test drive and go from there, shall we? This mount will probably fall over. It's not really designed. Just sitting in the car whilst we drive. loads of speed ups. So we'll just drive around a couple of those. See if we can hit the lock. There's nothing too bad there, I must admit.
hear a little bit of something, but I don't think it's suspension. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's glove box or something in the passenger door. I'm not really hearing that kind of clunking suspension noise. So I'll have a chat with Stu. See what I can do. Okay, so after that test drive, I couldn't really couldn't really find any fault or any knocking with the suspension on the uh, passenger side so I decided that was uh, best to leave it there and have a chat with Stu and see if we can figure out exactly where it's coming from um, so no doubt I'll be looking at it again in the future uh, but for now let's move on to the next problem okay so just got it idling so it uh, warms up a bit but you'll notice the size of water here you need to understand where that's coming from. So what we're going to do is we're going to dry this off. We're going to pour water in a couple of strategic places. See if we can see what's going on. Okay, so got my cup of tea. Most important thing. What I'm going to do is shut the door. I think. And leave you pointing where the water comes in. So it's kind of down there somewhere. Shut the door, pour some water over it and see what we get. I've got a few little bits coming from. So I'm not... Ah, yeah, there you go, okay. Look at that, it's dripping down in there. Properly, properly on the inside there. Now that is quite possibly coming from behind here. Okay, so that's dripping down in there, and what it probably is caused by is this. Now I have sealed this quite a few times trying to get it to seal. I think what we need to do. Take off this handle. This bit of trim, just all in one. It's going to be a bit of a pig, if I remember rightly. And see what we can see. So I'll just grab some tools. <sighs> okay, so sped this up a bit because I'm sure you don't want to spend an hour watching me take this apart. Basically, a case of taking the handle off, unclipping everything, and pulling it off. This bit of carpet is glued on, so have to be quite careful pulling it off. Um, it's just a bit of contact adhesive holds the carpet on to cover where the two bits of trim don't quite match. Okay, so that's the trim off. So I'm gonna pour some more water around and see what happens, basically. Okay, so that's actually. Jesus, what's that coming from? That's the good one to do. It's running down the back of the carpet now. Yeah, I'm getting soaked.
Okay, so I've dropped the headlining down. There's water coming in somewhere, but I need some more water to find out where. Okay, so the water is actually coming in kind of here. Now it could be, this is the this is the two rib nuts that I used to fit the cam lock on the top of the roof. It could be that there's a double skin there, so it could be that the water's tracking in through there. I think it's more likely, as it's here, it's more likely to be this seal. Now I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about that. Not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, so I'll show at the end what I'm going to do. Let's get in there with some brake cleaner. Scotch bright. Let's see. There's Scotch bright in there. I've got to be quite careful of the screen. Okay, it's not too bad of a job done. Let that go off. We'll see what happens. Okay, by the magic of uh, video editing, it's now the next day. I'm hoping the sealant has now gone off. So we're going to pour some over it. See what we get. Okay, so we're inside. I've just I've poured water over it a couple of times, and I'm feeling up here for any wetness. A couple of bits I think are still wet from yesterday. Just dried this off with a rag and poured some over and I'm not feeling anything come through. But what I'm gonna do is get a bit of kitchen roll or tissue paper or something. Shove it up in there, make sure it's dry and then pour some more over and see what I get. Okay, so waste some kitchen roll up in there. I'll jump out. Pour some water over the previous area where it leaked. Yesterday, yesterday that would have poured in, so we'll see what we get on the kitchen roll. What well, I'm hoping is that this is dry. Much. A little bit there. Yeah, that's second. No bueno. Okay, so seeding from the outside hasn't quite done it. Might not be able to pick it up, there's just a little bit of wet coming in still. I think the next thing to do is give it a bit of a seal from the inside because it's, it's a glued on windscreen. And clearly, what's happened is the heat adhesive is failing because it just shouldn't leak. Um, so I think that's the next thing I can do, if that doesn't work, getting to the point where you need a windscreen fitter, I think. Okay, so, I've kind of filled up in here, best I can with some silicon. It's going to take another day to go off, and the car goes back to shoot before then, so... Did I just see a drip of water there? I'm pretty sure I did. Let me just re watch that. Okay, so I did see a drip of water. It came from out right here. So I've just put a bit more in there. It's still looking a bit damp in places, but we'll have to see how that does. So I'm going to put it all back together. I haven't got time to do much else, so I'll put it all back together and we'll see how it gets on. Um, I'm 
go from there. If only I could work this fast. In reality, eh? Um, it's quite simple, it's just a case of putting all the headliner back up, a couple of screws for the um, sun visor, a couple of screws for the handle, the rest of it kind of just clips in, so although it takes a little while, it is quite straightforward. Okay, so I've reassembled all of this, glued this back on, it's all back together, and we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I think the chances of actually of fixing that leak are probably fairly low. I think it's a windscreen fitment issue more than anything else, but fingers crossed, eh? Okay, so that's the T4 done. Nice sunny day this morning. Uh, hopefully that ceiling will seal on the on the windscreen. I'm not 100% not convinced, so we may be looking at that one again. Uh, this one you'll see quite a few times. I'm often tinkering with it for Stu, so one of my regular projects, I suppose. Anyway, that's enough from me. See you in the next one. Cheers.